Welcome to Arizona Real Estate News, weekly real estate news with Jackie Smith and Ruby Graff from Century 21, Arizona Hi. Foothills. And Pat is not here today. So he We're is in Pat. Wisconsin. So, How's he going to give away his his hat? Not well. Me. We're going to talk about that in a minute too, because we're going to we're going to explain the drawing in just a second <laughs> okay. for the hat and the coveted cup. Uh, but for those that know Pat, um, he goes out to Wisconsin about once a quarter just to stock up on cheese. And uh, <laughs> so, this is the coveted uh, real estate news cup. And so today is the day. I know there was kind of some confusion out there as to when we were going to do this, but today is the day to put, just hit the like button and make a comment. And then you will be included in the drawing that we will hold next week. So you've got all week to hit the like button and make a comment. The comment can be short as, Hey, so that's how <laughs> we got some of those last week. We did. And I was thinking they, they were confused. So <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, but you know, that that's, Welcome to my world. I confuse people all the time. <laughs> so, I was just going to say, we're all confused. Especially <laughs> so with I'm this gonna, I'm going to share some stuff here with you. The first thing I want to do is I want to show people where I get my my numbers. And uh, so that there isn't any any confusion. So I, I start with the MLS and I go under new listing right here and see where it says 3425. And then I add in back on market, which ironically always hovers around 800, never changes. I add those two together, and that's what I call new listings. Then I add together under contract, accepting backups, contingencies, and then down on the bottom here, uh, pending. All right, down here somewhere. Those When I get those three numbers... Um, on that one, then I put them in my spreadsheet, and that's what makes this graph. So, so you saw um, um, under contract accepting backups, or no, new listing and back on market. That's this number right here, and that is uh, 4262. And that number you can see at one point was up to 4661. So, new listings coming on the market are still dropping. Now, there's a lot of news articles and press and television articles that say listings have exploded in Phoenix. Yes, they have, only because they're not selling. So yeah. because this number, the red number, are the number of homes under contract that I just added up. And you can see it's going up. Mm -hmm. It's not going up by much. You got a value point here of 27.17, and seven-day moving average now is 29.30. That's not a bad move. Um, it's just kind of hovering up a little bit higher, but you can see where it was. So it was sitting at about 35, and we were hitting about 4,000. So that number drilled down to where it's pretty much just muddling along. And because even though we're putting on fewer and fewer newer listings, the number staying out there just keeps growing. And today, again, we're 18,500, and we've just been that way for three weeks. You know, Rick, I looked the other day to see how many of those were vacant. It was 9,000 something. Half wow. of them were vacant. Wow. So, which just still shows so much of it is new home builders, Airbnbs, second homes, investors. There's yeah, a lot that of was heavy seven, investor going 7, still. 7,000 the last time you checked. Right. Mm -hmm. So, well, that explains the market and uh, new builds. Um, um, I went down to a new build this last weekend and I didn't even hear any hammers swinging. So I'm going to, you know, going to touch on that in one of video here. I'd like to go down on a weekday. You know, maybe they're taking weekends off now. I don't know. Well, there's still supply issues too. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's brutal. This right. is new listings. They track it a little differently than I do. But the illustration shows you that just compared to last year where you see a number of 4769, now it's down to 38, right? So mm -hmm. new listings on this chart is is lower than it has been since 2014 and 15. And then here's the monthly sales this year, last year. Look at look at that, mm -hmm. 2186 compared to 3474. That's why listings are growing. The other interesting thing I saw in the market is 24.5% of Phoenix home purchases fell through in June. 
So the rate hike popped up in May and 24% said they, they either chose to back out of their contract or they couldn't perform. They couldn't get the loan. Which is really sad. Yeah. Which Rick, the other thing we're seeing too is, which we never saw during the last two years is there's a lot of bins are canceled. So for people that don't understand what that is, we have a we have an inspection period. Most people were waiving that inspection period the last two years or making it a very short inspection period. And now people are taking the typical 10 days, which is boilerplate in the contract, doing their inspections. And I'm seeing people cancel over buyers cancel over not getting what they want out of the request for repairs to the to the sellers. Yeah. Right. That's, that's part of it too. Yeah, and that's uh, that's leverage that they didn't have for a long time because you, mm-hmm. you know, back when things were just screaming, you found something was broken. They just said, "Well, we're selling the house as is. Take it or leave it." Yeah, right. They know would, they have choices now. Yeah, right. Exactly. They're walking away from new builds too. Yeah. Um, I did ask uh, Pulte Homes uh, Development down here what kind of cancellation she had, and I, mm-hmm. she was just kind of blowing me a windy. Oh, hardly any. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> All righty then. At uh, least they're talking to can, us again. Yeah. Well, not that I can fill in for Pat, but the mortgage news today, um, you know, we went up. We're almost at five and a half now from about 5.2. And it looks like a lot of it was just based on the news from the uh, Federal Reserve. They released their minutes, you know, when they're all jawbone. And, and so they're saying here, Participants agreed there was little evidence to, in the data to date that inflation pressures were subsiding. So in other words, they're looking at numbers going, we don't, we don't see it coming down. And uh, participants em- emphasized that a slowing in aggregate demand would play an important role in reducing inflation pressures, the minute said. In um, real English, what they're saying is, Uh, We're going to clamp down hard and we're going to clamp down harder um, if we don't see improvement. So everybody thought, the market thought, that they were perhaps a little more dovish than they actually are. The minutes come out and they're all saying, we got a feeling we're going to have to clamp down harder Mm -hmm. uh, because we're not seeing a slowdown. They're not seeing a slowdown in unemployment. They're not seeing a slowdown in activity, although some of the retail data coming out shows that... uh, Places like Target, you know, their sales, uh, their profits were down. I think what, something like 60%. Um, people are just not out shopping like they were because we're trying to pay for groceries. <laughs> and they're going and to Walmart. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or they're I going think to Walmart's, Walmart. Walmart's numbers were better than expected, I thought I heard. I hadn't read that one yet. So now That's you guys. What I thought I heard. You guys went out and got some. Uh, some market insights from some other agents, I understand. Yeah, we did. We did. We were reaching out to some of the agents in our office. Ruby, you want me to go through a few of these? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. So, um, yeah, we sent out a message, just kind of wanted to get the feel for what was going on with the other agents in the office. Um, <laughs> there's a funny one here. Uh, I had one from Debbie Schur in our office, and she says, I have a potential seller. Uh, who doesn't realize the market has changed, thought we would get multiple offers in a day. And of course, I had to explain reality to him. And it's crazy because we're still seeing that. And then I got some really good insight from Liz Contreras, which this was something I was saying a couple shows ago um, as well. And I think this is happening because we're having those discussions with people. So her, her comments to me were, my experience is that buyers don't realize that sellers are willing to give concessions and there's a lot more options now. They also don't realize that interest rates aren't as high as 6.5 that scared them off. We've been educating our database about buyer opportunities, which is starting to bring some of the buyers back. Um, And on that point, Jax, um, on that point, I've actually been over the last couple of days calling all of the buyers that I've been working with that kind of went cold for a bit and just holding off, just trying to educate them and let them know the rates are coming down. We're able to get down payment assistance programs again for that lower price point, as well as, um, you know, just seller concessions and home warranties and those benefits again for our buyers. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, the average buyer is saying, um, well, my neighbor said, 
uh, my, my friend said, the coworker said, and uh, you know, they don't, I don't blame them. They're not getting drilled down. But that's what I ran into with, with yeah. one of my sales is that he was expecting multiple offers first weekend because that's what happened to his neighbor. And I said, yeah, but I mean, I showed you the numbers. Here's don't, don't, I only hope we're going to get that many, but we only had two first weekend. He was fit to be tied. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. We had a, another guy, Tom Sanchez. He's got numerous buyers he's working with. Um, it sounds like what he's finding is that uh, they're having to step down on their expectations, which, you know, we kind of all saw that coming. So, you know, the buyers that were looking at the higher price points in order to find something with interest rates, they're having to step down and anything under 300 is super rough. Yeah. Yeah. That price point is almost non-existent. Mm -hmm. Right. And then when yeah. it now, does show up, it, it's gone. So. <laughs> right. Ruby has one she listed, um, which we're get she's getting bombarded on, uh, Tucky. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about yeah. Tucky, all the investor activity you're getting? Oh, I saw that. You posted that on Facebook. I saw that this morning. Yeah, it it's um it's just a home that's not been updated in you know a number of years, if ever. So it's needs a lot of work. Um, but yeah, it's going to be. I've got probably I'm going to go with seven um, contracts in my email to review, and then um, verbal contracts as well, just verbal offers. But um, yeah, so I'm just setting up a block of time tomorrow to let anyone that's going to show it, that's their inspection period is tomorrow. And we're just going to go from there. Well, when that's a home that investors are looking for too, and they're probably shaking their head mm -hmm. going, how did this one get past this? But it's priced um, at a point where investors are attracted to it. Right. We went yeah. into a duplex today that's got California prices. And uh, <laughs> um, I mean, it's just awful. And, uh, and there was a homeless guy sleeping in the shed out back. <laughs> no. And it, the the stories behind this place because the neighbors next door were still there and it was their son owns the place and the guy that used to live here was a plumber so you had to hear the whole thing but yeah. i just told my clients i go you sure you, you don't have the capital to, you know maybe if you maybe if you get this thing for four hundred thousand, not 575 oh my what goodness. was it rick fourplex it duplex? was a dupla duplex and it was uh like 40th street and um thomas and 40th Street Indian School area, and but I said you, you gotta you gotta put a list together here. You need you need a roof, yeah. Okay, well it's got old galvanized plumbing that's already broken once. Probably need to replumb the whole place, right? Well, maybe not. I assume yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Totally out of code when it comes to electrical work now at this point. So you're gonna have to redo all that. All the floors are shot. One of the ceilings had a great big leak in it. In other words, this has got to be almost a total rebuild. So mm -hmm. you're not going to get in and out in this thing for a hundred thousand. Right. And this was a listing that you went to or yeah. Um, yeah. you were representing the buyer. Yeah. I'm representing the buyer. And gotcha. so, you know, it just, it, it's again, the photos just showed the outside mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I just look, if you're going to put a listing on, please do, I don't care what it looks like inside. If it's bad, then put the photos up to show that it's bad. Just was it you know, tenant tell, occupied? Maybe tell the truth on one side. Okay. The other side was vacant. Vacant. So they could torn, have showed it. Torn up and smelly. Yeah, yeah. It oh was, lordy! It was and it was hot. Oh god, it was hot. So all nice and muggy. So that's what's going on in the market. So I, it's more of the same right now. Well, How long do you think this is gonna? It's starting to pick up for us because my buyer calls yeah. out. Right. Mm -hmm. And and we're getting showing requests. I, and yeah. I, I'm so excited. They started so, yesterday and I'm, I'm yeah. excited as well. Yeah. So I know a lot of people were angry at me last show for saying I think that the buyers might be coming back. Um, you know, and I think it might have been taken the wrong way when I think they're going to come back in groves. What I'm worried about is I think we're going to have that ceiling inventory and we're going to start to slowly inch down as some of that stuff sells off and people get a little comfortable. And that's why I'm telling people right now, you know, sellers, they're given concessions, they're taking contingencies. It is a good time to buy. The rates are still down. I mean, no, we're not two and a half, three percent, but they're down from that 
six ish range that they were at. Yeah. And there's a lot more choices and you're getting, you're getting repairs done. You're getting concessions, you're getting contingencies. So. Well, well I had several this week reach out um, saying that they're planning on coming down here, September, October and purchasing one wants to purchase a second home. One of them is a relocation that they want to come out here and do. And they're planning on September, October. And, uh, and then another one uh, from back East um, relocating out here. And so they seem to feel that that time frame looks kind of favorable for them. It might be. Yeah, I have, I have a classmate um, moving out here in September, October. So she's selling her house in Denver and then moving out here to Arizona as well. So, um, and that's a high price point as well. So we'll see. They're still looking. People are still buying and moving. All right, cool. Well, don't forget to uh, put in to win for the win the mug, and don't forget that coveted prized price mortgage hat that Pat's throwing. <laughs> in. And he said the I other day he, he stuck his neck out, said he's probably going to give away two of them. So, oh wow, um, <laughs> nice know, I mean, the, the excitement this channel is going to for our millions and millions of viewers. <laughs> um, again, so we're going to again you, you, when you do that next week, you know, Thursday at six. When the show's on, uh, there will be a random picking and you'll see it. And then when your name comes up, you need to contact us because we don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> we just see some YouTube names, but I have no idea where you live. And you should be glad that I don't know. Where you live. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> some of the snarky comments I get, I get. So anyway, it's fun. Oh, I my enjoy goodness. It. <laughs> well ladies right. thanks for joining us and we will yep. see you next show all right bye bye, bye.